Hello, James. Hello. Hello, hello. Um, okay, so this is our uh, first interview. One of many, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so the first question I have um, is, very simply, what is the best Shakespeare performance you've seen? Best Shakespeare performance I've seen? Um, oh, goodness me, I've seen so many. It's very hard to pick a specific one. On stage or film? Ooh, one on stage and one on film. One on stage, one on film. Um, well, there's an actor, I'm very, a good friend of mine called David Middleton, and he gave, has given some of the best performances I've ever seen. He's not famous, a well-known actor. Um, if you want somebody well-known, oh, I do remember seeing Pete Postlewaite years ago in Macbeth at the, in Stratford. When I was at school, so it must, it, it was quite a while ago, so it must have, it must be memorable. He played Macduff. Ooh, awesome, awesome. And it doesn't matter if the person isn't famous, it matters <laughs> if the performance moves you. Um, a follow-up to that is, did you have any experience with Time of Athens before this production? No, none at all. I knew of it, and I'd seen photographs, but that was it. Oh, awesome. Never uh, read it until now. Do you recall any of the photographs you saw? Uh, yeah, there, uh, there was one of David Suchet. In, um, I think he was in a rubbish dump or something. It was a few years ago. Oh, right. <laughs> Ooh, a rubbish dump. I think. That I think was it was a sick of Stratford, I think. Towards the end when, I assume they're modernised versions of the Yes, decade. second half, yeah. Um, you have been incredibly prolific with Shakespeare in your career, um, uh, more so than actually any other cast member. What draws you to Shakespeare again and again? Um, I just got lucky, I suppose, <laughs> originally with the castings I was given. Um... I, work. Work. <laughs> That's probably the most, the most simple answer is it's work. Um, but I do like doing it, certainly. I, 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 you know, I've been very lucky. I've been in 20-something of uh, Shakespeare's plays and um, I'm very fortunate to play lots of great roles. Not to be a massive stalker, um, <laughs> but to give you a scary number, it's not 20. It's actually 41 Shakespeare plays, and, which is amazing. The rest, and here's some numbers. The rest of the cast put together have been in 61. And not to brag, I'm 10 of that 61. <laughs> <laughs> um, how does that make you feel, knowing that we all sort of look to you for, like, Shakespearean brilliance? Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> not sure about that. Well, 40, it could be more than 41. I don't know. There's a few I've probably forgotten about. But um, uh, I think it's 20-something different Shakespeare plays, though, isn't it? I think. I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, other cast looking to me? Good. No, I, I, don't, I try not to think about it. Um, there's very lots of very very good actors in this production. Um, I'm lucky enough to be surrounded by by them, and uh, I shall be looking to them for help as well. Oh, that's because <laughs> um, it must be very almost second nature now. The the the, the complexity of the rhythm and the, the the technicalities of doing Shakespeare must be something that you because of uh, your experience with it so much that you you don't have to sit down and, and go through and work it out it's just it's just there in your head um i i still do work things out especially with a play i don't know at all um like this one um but i just i don't really think about it i suppose i, I just i just i just say it and hope for the best <laughs> it's a terrible thing to say i know but no i i, I it, no i don't i don't think about it I, I try not to think about that side of it I, I just try and do what's what's natural really i suppose um yeah i, I guess having done it for a long time it it does stick in the mind naturally uh, but even i suppose when i was starting out i i i never annotated or wrote down too many things i just tried to remember things i just this philosophy which May or may not be good. That if if I remember it, it's worth remembering, and if I don't, it's not. I think that's a very good <laughs> philosophy. I love that. We're just going to take a quick pause. Now, *Time of Athens* is one of Shakespeare's greatest tragedies, um, and you've done most of them mm. um, in, in your uh, career. Of the four you haven't, this is not. To, I'm going to be really stalkery here. Oh. Of the four you haven't done which is Coriolanus, Antony and Cleopatra, Titus and Troilus and Cresta. Which one would you love to do most and why? Oh, goodness me. Um, what were they again? Titus, Coriolanus. Antony and Cleopatra, and, and Troilus and Cresta. Oh. 
It's got to be a toss-up between Titus and Coriolanus. Um, or Coriolanus. Oh, God, me. A friend of mine years ago said, oh, let's do Coriolanus in, 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 in New York. A very good New York actor friend of mine. We never got around to it. He wanted to do Coriolanus and I wanted to do Orphidius. Um, I think I'm drawn to Titus. Um, I'm not quite sure why. Possibly the film Theatre of Blood with Vincent Price and the Titus scene in that <laughs> draws me to it. I don't know. Um, I, I think Titus, possibly. Uh, that's quite a quite a, a meaty piece. To Well, to pardon the pun for those that know the play. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I caught that. I like that. <laughs> um, what was the Vincent Price thing, sorry? It was, uh, uh, oh, every actor should watch it. It's called Theatre of Blood. Vincent Price is a, an old, hammy old actor, old actor, who... who uh, I don't, I don't spoiler alert, um, who, who, it's not really, he, he, you think he's dead and he comes back because uh, he's not dead and he, um, he does in lots of critics Oh, and it's full of very well-known famous British actors of, of the 70s, it's great fun, um, gore fest in the sort of hammer way, not like the modern, modern movies and it's such, it's such fun, Theatre of Blood. Oh. Every every actor should watch it. It's a great yarn. I'm gonna, Very silly. I'm actually going to write that down right now because I love um, Vincent Price. No, Vincent Price, Ian Hendry, Arthur Lowe, Dinah Dawes, Jack Hawkins, uh, Michael Horden, oh goodness me, Dinah Rigg, uh, amongst others. Actually, Dinah Rigg's in it. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Mm -hmm. um, one of the actors in, I believe it's Daniel, in uh, just because I was doing the bios, he was in... Um, I, it wasn't a hammer horror, but it was the same thing with um, Tom Baker and... Ah, uh, oh, oh, come on, who's Star Wars? Who's Grand Moff Tarkin? I don't know. I don't watch Star Wars. You've never seen Star Wars? <laughs> I've seen it, but I haven't watched any of the new movies. Not Michael Goff, but it's the, he, he, he's the hammer guy. He's oh, Along with Vincent Price, he was always in them. Um, Cushing? Yes, oh, Peter oh. Cushing. Um, and uh, Daniel played one of the monsters in it. Oh, wow. I was telling about these uh, cross set, so yeah. it would be the same type of uh, yeah. the gore. But as you say, the what I call these days tasteful gore, yes. rather than just gratuitous gore. Um, yes, the, I love horror films, but I I have no time for unnecessary gore. Mm -hmm. Now, um, oh, this is a double contradiction. I can't not mention this. Um, <clears throat> we've actually acted together before. We da, have, da, da, da. yes. You, um, you hired me, in fact, and directed me in a tour of The Tempest, where you were Prospero and I was Caliban. Um, and ironically, I was your servant in that too. <laughs> uh, oh, how... I, did, I didn't mention the greatest Shakespeare performance, of course, with your performance there. Uh, I, I know, how awkward. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did love my Caliban. Caliban! Um, how would you compare Prospero to Time and Though? Because they are both, are they both fair masters? I think time is a very, very fair master. Um, Prospero, tough but fair, I would say. And I, I, I think time is what he needs to be, although he, he is blinded by his own lack of well, lack of sight. For if that doesn't sound a bit strange, he um, he wants to be liked and loved, and so he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. Um, what's the word? He, he can't see beyond his own tunnel vision of where he wants to be and he's got very good advisors around him Flavius uh, being the main one who, who tries to help him but he, he doesn't want to be helped he, he has his own tunnel vision um, I suspect he could be tough if need be he wasn't he's an ex-general but I don't think he likes being brutal um, not that Prospero does like it but I think Prospero does it intentionally to stop his daughter being uh, molested, shall we say, by Caliban. Um, Prosper is pro probably harsher. Still fair, though. Though actually, just thinking about it, obviously Prospero was sent was cast out, out of Milan mm -hmm. um, because he wasn't tough enough. Yes. So actually, in many ways, Prospero goes to the island, uh, Timon goes to the cave, yeah. and if only... If they'd be reversed, it would have been interesting. Yeah, I, I suppose Prospero become, ha, becomes tough through necessity on, on his island. Um, and of course, he, he does. He, he gives them all at the end, doesn't he? He's not, uh, he doesn't um, 
It's not like he holds a grudge in many ways. It would have been a much darker play if at the end he just kills him. Just kills him. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. 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 Which is not unlikely for Shakespeare sometimes. No, I mean, no, no. You Titus, Titus, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty brutal ending. Does anyone survive in Titus? Uh, but, but probably a few servants. <laughs> yeah, just then, having to clean it yeah. up. They're like, oh, that's yeah. it. Like um, the first series of Blackadder. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Or the second. Uh, yes, that as well. Yeah, yeah. Not the third, though. Or the fourth. <laughs> no, the fourth does. The fourth. Yeah, it's really the third. The third's the only one, I think, yeah. where they don't all die. Um, oh, spoiler alert for Blackadder oh, yes, fans. Yes, yes. Well, I suppose you wouldn't be a Blackadder fan if you didn't know how it ended. Um, how do you feel about your role of Tymon? I mean, do you like the character? Was it easy to relate to? into his character motives and intentions? I like him very much. I um, When I first read this script, not, not the, the play, but the, the, the script for Misanthropus, um, I, I, I took to him straight away, really. Um, I, 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 I wrote as all that. I applied for various roles. I didn't specifically apply just for Titus. Uh, uh, Timon, sorry. But I, I did like him, and I always I felt I understood him pretty well from the start um, and understood who he was and what he's about. Obviously it takes time to get to the final final result, but he's somebody I, I, I did, um, I was drawn to. Do, um, do, you, uh, do you like, um, like is the wrong word. Do you feel you just intrinsically understood him? I, I, <sighs> Probably, probably sounds arrogant, but yes. Um, I don't quite know why. I think I just did. Um, I mean, obviously, there's lots of things one finds out about in the process of, of, of rehearsing and making the making the film. Um, but I, I, like I said, I sort of was drawn to him from the start. I think I did understand him from the start. But there's obviously still a lot to find out. So, like an onion. Onions yes, have layers. Yes, lots of layers. <laughs> um, was there any expectation you had about the character that has changed since starting rehearsal? Um, oh, I might have to come back to that one. <laughs> I have to think about that one. Uh, can you say the question again? Um, was there any ex expectations you had about the character that through the process of rehearsal has either changed your view or the... Um, style or way we're going with it has forced you to change an expectation? Um, probably sounds rather boring, but I don't think there is really. Um, I think he's... No, I think I don't think so. No, it's, it's such a very, very hard question. That, and I, as I think about it on the hoof, I... I I can't say there is. I'll probably finish this and think about something in about two hours' time. <laughs> um, but I might come back to that. But as you say, because you did feel that you just got the character and his intentions from the beginning, maybe there there isn't things to change because it's some things. Sometimes a character just slots into place, and you you don't even need to think about. The, what tactic they would use or anything like that because you just know what they would use. And other characters, it, it's a complete mystery to why they say half of their lines. So if this was one that just all slotted into place, maybe expectations wouldn't change. Um, possibly. I, I think it probably sounds very arrogant to, to, to say that you know, I, I got the character from the start. Obviously, I don't get everything from the start at all. Um, but he is a very generous man and f foolish as well at times, um, sees everything for the positive. I think he's sort of a, a glass, is always pretty full kind of guy and can't see the, the pitfalls and the problems around him. Um, and the second half becomes a very bitter, bitter man. And I, 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 it's, I think it's in that sense, he's quite simple. Obviously, no, no, none of these roles are simple or easy to play, but I think he is. Everybody around has lots of mo motives, and uh, or most of them do, um, machinations. Whereas he doesn't have that really. Um, all he wants is to be uber generous and be liked, um, which leads to his downfall. So. 
a cautionary tale. Yes. It's the third and final segment. Do, 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 do. I make my own sound effects here. <laughs> no expense, <man. laughs> And on that note, of uh, have you ever worked with CGI before? Um, probably. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, on a, there was a theatre production I did where there was some film excerpts within it called Twentieth Century Faust. Played, which was written by a, a good friend of mine who sadly passed away last year, John Cooper. And he, I was in three productions of that, but one of them I just played the American president. And I was shot and filmed. Not that I wasn't shot, I was filmed. And um, then they put in the US symbol behind me and various other things. I, did, I didn't see that until I saw the, the production on stage. Oh. So I think that's probably the only time. Uh, they, I think I've done some... some films for young filmmakers where they've added FX on afterwards but they weren't directly to do with me Ah okay so nothing specifically green screen or No just the one, just the US president which was green screen All those little dots and No the, none, the none the little around. dots around no. the dots on the back of the walls where they would then CGI stuff on top No this was just filmed in somebody's living room and then they they stuck it on afterwards I don't oh. know <laughs> So I don't, and it wasn't technically green screen, I suppose, but it was a CGI eff effectively. Nice. So. Oh, look, sorry, that's I've watched too much Brooklyn Nine Nine. Nice, nice. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea what that is. <gasps> Brooklyn Nine Nine's so good. <laughs> oh, I mean, everyone goes on about it and you think, yeah, I'm sure it's going to be great. It is. It's hilarious. It's Andre Bauer, who actually, fun fact, even though this isn't my interview, I saw on stage playing Claudius um, in Hamlet mm. in Shakespeare in the Park. In New York, which they don't, it's not always Shakespeare, but no. they call it. Where Meryl Streep did Mother Courage and her children there, and they call it Shakespeare in the Park, even though it's not. And in fact, there was a storm. This is very boring, sorry. There was a storm that night, um, and all the other actors refused to go on stage. They're like, it's wet, it's, it's raining, I'll be rained on. And Meryl Streep had overheard this from her dressing room, came into the main dressing room, and she was like, well, I'm going to go on stage. And if Meryl Streep goes on stage and you don't, you're going to look really bad. <laughs> And she was apparently on stage, like, swiping the water off, um, sweeping it off the stage with the Mother Courage rags and stuff like that. Oh, what's a bit of rain to outdoor performers? Yeah. Oh, as we would know from... Yes, yeah, many times. <laughs> Yet annoyingly, for The Tempest, it only rained three times? Yeah, it wasn't much, actually. No. Very, very few times. So, very which was, I have to say, nice. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yes, though I did my Caliban robe... We, we had robes, so we were quite protected. Yes. Yes. Um... Actually, every open air show I've ever done, I've always been very fortunate in my outfit that I've had a big hat or a big robe that keeps me rather, rather dry. Yes. Note to self: use yeah. a sombrero. <laughs> yeah, yes. Why is this? Why are you? Why are you setting this play in Mexico? Again? Yeah. No reason. Just I keep like dry. <laughs> yes. Um, now you're. You've not only done um, Shakespeare on stage, but you've also done voice work mm -hmm. with Shakespeare. Does that? age you when it comes to delivering Shakespeare on film? Age me? Um, um, uh, aid, aid. Oh, aid, sorry. Um, well, I played a very small role. I played um, Jack Rugby in The Merry Wives of Windsor, and a Roman general, I think his name was Lucius, I can't recall now, in Cymbeline many, many years ago. Um, so it's... It, I wanted another one as well. A number of speeches for something. Anyway, um, that was... I, whether it aids me or not, I can't tell because it was so long ago. If it'd be more recent, I, I could probably say yes, it will help. But um, these, these were early 90s. So. Oh, nice. Or mid 90s or something like that. <laughs> what, um, what do you expect from a director? Help. <laughs> ah. um, clarity, I think, probably. Clarity of what is wanted and what is needed. Because um, if you haven't got that, then you could go off on any tangent. I think. And what's it like working with Maximiano Cobra? Oh, should I answer this question? Uh, it's great fun, actually. I, I, I do enjoy it. I enjoy it very much. Um, I have... Well, we all went in, obviously, not knowing on the very first day. And since then, I've seen thing, things grow and change and the rest of it. And uh, I, I've, I've always enjoyed it um, from the start. So I'm not just saying that, by the way, either Max. No, you are lovely. <laughs> um, as a prolific director yourself, 
Is it sometimes hard giving control over to another director? I'm going to be boring and say, no, it's not. No, it's, the, it's, their, it's their baby, not mine. So I don't have any problem with that at all. So. I, that's, I, I've, I've never directed, so I would have absolutely... Oh, one time. But I, I would have no idea what it is like to... Because, but it must be hard, because as a director yourself, in certain moments, maybe not with yourself, but with others, you have an idea that you, you want... As if you were the director, you'd be like, oh, I, I would throw this out there. And you, it must be... It must be a little difficult to sometimes know this is not the role I'm playing right now, so it, I have to I have to take my directing thoughts away. Um, yeah, obviously, I think I think we probably all have thoughts of mm, that. Maybe throwing that idea, but the, I, I've never directed on film, so that's different from stage. And secondly, it's um, I, in this well, any director of film will know where they where they want to head with it. I, as an actor playing the role, don't know everything that's in the mind, obviously, of the director who sees the whole thing. Um, and although I might think, well, that'd be a good idea to try that, it might not fit at all in the story or in the, in the, in the production. Um, it could be a brilliant idea, but it just won't work in this particular production. So um, anything I do think, I, I, I suggest things for my character, but I, I, I wouldn't suggest them for others unless somebody asks me and says, well, what, 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 would you throw in an idea or something? Um, but no, it's it's not my production, so to speak. So I I, I wouldn't force my own thoughts onto it in any way or, or, or in that sense. That's very sensible. And it's, as far as I understand, it's a very good way to please directors is to not constantly chime in. Because especially, I mean, our cast is very large. If you had 18 plus people offering their two cents about every moment, you'd never get anything. I, I think there would be um, you know, pistols at dawn. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. Um, what do you take away from the story of Time and of Athens? As Time and or as me? <laughs> um, you could do both. Ooh. Don't be don't, don't be tunnel visioned. <laughs> don't be blinkered. Be open and listen. Listen to others. Um, Timon hears, but he doesn't listen. So listening, and as every actor knows, listening is one of the most important things you can do. Um, I, th I think it's a very it is it's quite a sad story in many ways. Um, you know, this is once once great general man. Um, who throws everything away by being too by, by by trying to be generous and kind and wanting to be liked he throws his life away and becomes a bitter and twisted misanthrope um misanthropist misanthrope um i think both ways both. um so I, I think perhaps listen and, and be open to others what others say don't just block them off so whoever they are well, that's very very good advice now we have one final question. Do, 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 do. Oh, well, I might have follow-ups. Who knows what I'll do. Um, do you feel there is hope for Athens by the end of the film? Uh, what's left of it? Yes. Um, I, yeah. I, 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 spoilers. <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert. Um, yes, I, I think um, Athens is probably... It has quite a lot of undesirables in it and, and maybe wants... Well, who knows? New ones will come along, as as they always do. Um, I, I I I like to think so. Whether Alcibiades is the right man to to lead everything, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm you know dead and gone, so I don't care. <laughs> Frankly, <laughs> I'm not there. Yeah, you know, my my grave is a warning to others. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Am I? Yes, it could say a cautionary tale above the above yes. the grave of time. And... One likes to think there is hope, though. Whether there is, I don't know. But would like, I'd like to think so. What's that line in uh, Richard II with the um, dig the, uh, here and here in laid, here lies two kinsmen, dig their graves with weeping eyes, would not this ill do well? And you could put that on Timon's grave, little teardrops. You could, fun, Richard II is, is not a play I've ever seen either, funnily enough. Interesting. Or read, I ought to. <gasps> I will go and read it. Oh, I love Richard II. Yes, no, um, histories actually were, it's almost, you're, you've done almost all the tragedies and you've actually done all the comedies? I'm almost um, certain. All bar All's Well. All's Well. Mm. 
which, mm. which isn't that funny. Um, <laughs> oh, two, two Noble Kings when I'm not done. That's, he wrote that, that's co-written? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Um, but it's the histories. That, that Those are the ones you've actually done. They've avoided me, yes. I don't know why. Henry V I've been in. Um, I think that's probably it. Yeah. Yes, never, it is. Never got to do Richard the Third. No, I wouldn't mind. Ah, oh, it's cracking, such a cracking roll. Yes. So. Actually, we have quite a few people who've done Richard the Third. I know ah. Maximiano's done Richard the Third. Um, I've, I've, I've done Richard the Third. Um, uh, and I want to say David. Oh, and one of the. Um, oh, he's so young, but he's so talented. I forget his name. This is terrible. Don't put this in the interview because oh no. One of the one of the soldiers, I want to say, the young. The oh young yeah, yeah, one. yeah. He's done Richard the ah. Third. He's actually he's done Richard the Third and Macbeth. And he's Good like, for him. Probably like Brilliant. I don't know. He's sixteen, fifteen. He's twelve. He's twelve years old. And he's done them both. It's immensely unfair. Wow. <laughs> he's not there. He's much older. Um, my, my dentist's son, my old ex dentist in London, when he used to live in London, his son was about twelve, and he did he did Timon. Whoa! And, and learned it, and how he learned it. Oh, amazing. Oh my goodness! Ah. Oh. That would be a really interesting... A 12, 12 years old... School production of some sort. It was a curious play to do. Yeah. But they did it. I mean, credit to that school, because that's... Like, generally, it's a Midsummer Night's Dream yeah. for I'm, the 50th time. I'm going to phone you up for some help. <laughs> yes. Okay, Bob. <laughs> Love it. Well, thank you so much, James, for coming along and doing our little interview here. My pleasure. Um, and it will be on the website and listenable. Tune in next time for Ellis interviewing people. Next up, Declan.